The uh, quill lines have all been burned in on the appropriate feathers. I've come back and sanded on either side to re knock off the shine and the bevel that might, might have been created from the uh, wood burning tip. Uh, then I have come back and also penciled in all the barb lines for each of the individual feathers. These will be a guide for me so that I don't have to uh, think so hard about burning. I can think about the actual lines I'm burning and not their direction because the pencil line is guiding me. Uh, with wood burning, there's a lot of different uh, elements that can change the way a wood burner burns. Um, First of all, the household electricity uh, and certain uh, electrical appliances might kick in and um, or off, and you'll notice a fluctuation in the temperature of your um, of your wood burning tip. So, um, you know, it's nice to have the nice steady um, temperature coming off of your wood burner. Now, if you're fast at wood burning, you can use a higher temperature. But if you're slow at wood burning, the longer you leave the tip on the piece of wood or the area you're burning, the wider the gap is going to be that you're burning. This is a uh, small skew. It's quite sharp. All the wood burning manufacturers make small skews. Uh, I like to uh, hold my cord instead of having it pull off the back with weight. I will use it so and take that weight off. You can use a rubber band too to uh, secure that if, if you want, but um, generally speaking, this works for me. So with uh, with your speed you'll have to adjust your temperature. Now I have mine set you know quite low and I'm looking for a temperature very similar to this. This temperature allows me to burn a nice long line and have it be kind of a light brown. I don't want it to be black and burned. <clears throat> I want it to be, um, or charred I should say. I do want it burned. I don't want it charred. So I come back with my next lines. And this is just a study block that I've sanded so that I can test the temperature and I can warm up. Um, when you haven't burned for a while, quite often, oops, quite often, you're going to need a little bit of warming up to get back into the groove. So, by using the study block, I'm not compromising my piece. See, as I speed up, it's not burning quite as much. So I'm going to turn the temperature up just a little bit, and you find the sweet spot for how fast you are moving for the wood that you're burning. This is Tupelo. I slow down you can see the width of that burn line grows which is good if that's what you're looking for but you need to get your your temperature down your speed down and and get warmed up before you actually burn on your actual piece so Keeping all of this in mind, I 
think I found a, a nice temperature. I want it to be where I have control over that. For nice uniform lines. Now for me the easiest thing to do is to start with the uh, I'd say the uh, inside feathers <clears throat> the ones that are harder to reach I like to do the harder things first so that the rest seems a lot easier so I'm gonna reach in and use this to I'm following the pencil lines that I spent the time drawing into this feather onto this feather and you don't want to burn so you know really deep this is carved quite thin however you know you don't see that much depth in between these barbs on an actual feather so It's also hard to paint in caverns, even if uh, splits are okay, but I'm trying to get those caverns painted, it can be an issue. And then you need to be sure and clear strokes all the way over the end and the edges of this feather for it to be convincing. All the way up to the end. Okay, so I've got that one. in for this one holding your burner off to the side allows you to get in a little bit further it also keeps you from hitting the feather above it something you can easily lose sight of because you're watching the tip not the top of your burning blade. And if you just if you go a little bit wide on one, don't fret. Slow down. And get control again. Especially in the areas where things are going to show. And there's some hidden areas you're still going to burn, but do not be tempted to cut through your feather. has the texture as well. Everything's uniform. <coughs> now this one's going to be a little more difficult. I'm going to start 
on this outer edge. And burning for me from the left to the right allows me to see where I was and do the next one. If I did it backwards, my blade would be covering up the last barb I burned and I can make a mistake that way. So this keeps what I'm working on in view when I work from uh, left to right. Could be different if you're left-handed, I'm sure. So if you hold your hand too directly above the blade, it can get kind of hot on your fingertips. So adjusting for that can make a big difference. Let's see how slow I'm going on this. Well, if you look at a feather in real life, you'll see that some barbs are overlap or some barb has detached halfway up and then the either side barb has zipped itself up. And that's exactly what these barbs have, are zipper-like edges that interweave to hold them together. You do well to do a quick study on how these feathers work. Any feather. Understanding what you're trying to replicate is very important. You know, I can only go so far without my tip touching here, so I'm going to take it to a certain point so I don't burn the feathers that I've already wood burned above it and then I'll have to catch up from the other direction. I had a few requests to do some texturing for painting in acrylics. Normally when I wood burn fine detail, I use oils. But a lot of uh, <clears throat> you would like to see this done in So, I'm burning for that. I choose to do small sections because I can hold the piece at the same angle for those smaller sections. Be sure and come over the edge all the way, so you're completing your stroke and the feather itself. Be sure and look at it sideways before you decide you're done. for a little while you'll speed up, gain confidence in your strokes and speed comes of it. <laughs> 